Hey guys, welcome back to Rewild, where we talk about mental health, environment, and all things holistic well-being. So today I wanted to do a short little talk about decluttering for mental health. I've got my notes. The reason I chose this topic is because I recently moved and it's also just been something I've been thinking about a lot for the last couple of years. It has been a goal of mine to approach minimalism for about three years or so now and I'm nowhere near where I want to be but my life has still drastically improved by a lot. When I think about the eras that I've gone through in my life that were categorically messy or like a little bit more put together, I definitely experienced so much more overall well-being when my space was like clean and tidy. Now I have some interesting stats and trends that I started to see when I was looking into this more and something that we notice a lot in psychology and in the social sciences is this thing we call comorbidity when certain issues seem to like crop up together all at once. And for this particular topic, I've been finding interesting connections between messiness, earning potential, higher levels of cortisol, and more correlation with obesity. Again, this is pretty typical. When we think about the brain and our overall systems being connected, you know, higher levels of cortisol might contribute to maybe smoking more or more compulsive addictions. Higher levels of cortisol will also impact your ability to sleep, your body's ability to repair itself, deal with stress. And definitely those issues can lead to obesity. And there's a bit of a feedback loop of what is the piece that you need to change to shift the whole system. I don't want to get too much into like which piece you need to look at or want to look at, you know, or which pieces, but I do want to bring it to folks' attention that these things are connected because once we realize that they're connected, we have this chance to see ourselves as more of a holistic system where we're able to, you know, maybe just pick one thing, you know, maybe it's a compulsion, maybe it's a type of procrastination, or maybe it is having a messy house. And just pulling that one thread, you can start to create an environment that is more peaceful and therefore an environment that is gonna be more holistically healthy for you overall. So I wanted to give you guys a couple of tips for getting started. The first thing I wanna say about like dealing with clutter and shifting your mindset from the belief that I'm a cluttered person it's never going to happen for me to living a more aesthetically pleasing functional life with respect to your personal environment, I think is honestly just taking that first step in your mind that it's doable. A lot of times we waste so much time berating ourselves like that we didn't do it or that our house isn't good enough, especially women, because women are usually tasked with being like housekeepers or homemakers in families. They actually found in some studies that it was women who would have the higher levels of cortisol than men if their home was messy. I think this is because sociologically we tend to associate housekeeping and homemaking with female skill sets. Not that that's right or wrong. I just, you know, we tend to like conform to the standards of our society, right or wrong. So. That would be my first tip in like embarking on the journey. If you are sitting in like a crazy hoarder house right now while you watch this, or even just a nice house with a junk drawer, how I'm feeling about my home at the moment, it, it doesn't matter where you start. It matters kind of allowing yourself to imagine a version of your life that is not that chaotic. Another mental health kind of tip tool that I think is important from quarter loved ones I've seen and even for myself in the highs and lows of this kind of journey and also binge watching a lot of hoarders on the TV show is sometimes there is also a self-worth component like often in extreme hoarding we're looking at like some kind of trauma trigger potentially that is like a little bit on overdrive versus just a messy house although I think Hoarding is kind of epidemic in our culture. I kind of think that 
most people who are like, oh, my house is just messy. Like the definition of hoarding is that certain aspects of your home can no longer be used in the way that they were intended because of how much stuff. I gotta say, I don't know about you, but I know a fair amount of families that could fit that definition, my own including from time to time. So I think kind of raising the bar of what our standards are and not in a judgmental way or in a diagnosis happy way. We don't need to diagnose ourselves, you know, or judge other people, but I do think that we should do our best to take it seriously. And one of the things I've seen people do that I think is a really actually big obstacle is the guilt, you know, like, oh, I'm, I wish I was doing this. You know, I wish I was better, a better person, more focused, didn't have ADHD, whatever the excuse is or the reality is. It's always possible to improve a little bit. So those are my first two tips. And those are kind of a little bit more cerebral in terms of like a mindset shift, more pragmatic, tools and tips. This one is controversial and kind of unique. I haven't really seen a lot of other tidying, decluttering people offer this one, but mine is actually like utilize your closets and your storage as an interim when you're trying to get a space cleared. Like, so for instance, I'm in my office right now. I'm not going to show you because it's like kind of personal, but like, it's very nice. Like it's really clean. There's a bookshelf that's a little iffy that I need to address and there's a closet that, you know, has stuff to address in it. But I like this space, you know, when I look around, it's not overwhelming, you know, because I've like designated like this is the drunk drawer, this is the junk closet space. And then I'll even put it in my calendar or in my planner, like in August, I'm going to address this area. In September, I'm going to address this area. That way it's more manageable. The way that I stumbled upon this technique is actually like through doing the opposite, where I was looking at the KonMari method, which is excellent. That's just a whole other, take all her tips first. Like she's amazing after, after this video, go check her out if you're not already aware, cause she's pretty famous. But you know, the KonMari method recommends kind of going through the whole house and not so much room by room or area by area, but like, collecting all of the things of a certain type and pulling them together and that's great if you've got like feral laundry storage in like the garage or basement or you tend to spread paperwork around into different rooms but for myself like living in a house with like a few extra bedrooms or in the past even just being tired you know like if you have any kind of medical or mental or just it's the pandemic and we're all tired you know or we just got out of that like if you feel like your bandwidth is not all the way there or if you have children or other things that you need to use your space for vomiting out all of that stuff this is this was my term i would use for it is i would like vomit out all the drawers and i would just dump everything in a pile in the middle of a room and like basically i'm just suggesting don't do this like because i used to clean this way it's okay if you're moving or if like you've designated a three day weekend and you've made yourself a space that's like a safe room in the house that's peaceful. If you're gonna do that method of dumping it all out, make sure you can still access your kitchen for coffee and breakfast in the morning. Make sure your bedroom is still a clean, peaceful space. I wouldn't do it for the whole house or for like a studio apartment where you have to sleep that way. I did that one night in the past year and I slept terribly because of course I didn't finish everything I wanted to. It took two days instead of one and I didn't really sleep well at all that evening because I was so distracted by like everything I could see. So this tip might seem kind of obvious, but actually it was such a wake up call for me because a lot of times we want to rip the bandaid off. We want to be perfect right away. and. I just realized for myself and my own overall goal of just having a peaceful, calm space to live in, it makes a lot more sense to allow myself to have like a messy closet here or there, or like an area that's like out of sight, out of mind that I'm gonna go address soon. Now, of course, a lot of us get in that limbo where we have all these little like need to address it later, out of sight, out of mind areas, and we just forget it's there. So. What I have trained myself to do in the last six months, especially, and kind of over the years is like have a, even if it's just in my mind, a rotation schedule and just know that decluttering and cleaning up is a lifelong process. This isn't just a one and done. I know that the Convery method kind of treats it that way and that's fine. 
you know, you, we can think of it that way. I like that idea of like a transformative process where you're like a whole new person afterwards. But ultimately, you're going to buy more stuff. You're going to grab a t-shirt out of your closet and like rumple up a couple other shirts once in a while. Your kid or your cat might destroy something. Maybe a holiday comes by and you've got a lot of extra wrapping paper, whatever it is. Things often come in the house. And the big problem, especially in our like high consumption, kind of Americanized culture, things don't leave the house as quickly. The other thing, you know, being a sustainability channel, <laughs> it's great to not like exclusively, but that is part of what I want to share on this station is, you know, remembering that while it's good to get rid of stuff and I actually say prioritize your own health 90% of the time, like if you can't be perfect with your decluttering process, making it sustainable, you know, do what you got to do in order to stay sane, basically, right? Take care of you. Because the systemic problems of our environment are not an individual problem, ultimately, they're a collective issue. So if you're overwhelmed, you know, always look out for you first, you know, eat well, schedule your day in a way that makes sense. But that caveat stated we all know that when we're getting rid of things and even when we're designing our life post trying to become a minimalist it number one it's it is more sustainable if you do it a certain way and number two it requires you to be able to think about your stuff in that full cycle kind of way too it's really tempting when you first get into minimalism to just start throwing everything away or donating everything. And I actually think that it's a lot more soulful and mentally healthy, even though it's harder sometimes, the harder things are better long-term, to like look at each object and like truly ask yourself, like, should this really be donated if you're donation happy? Or is this object like kind of too ratty or gonna end up in a landfill anyway? A lot of objects end up in a landfill even when they've been donated. The other style of person I find, you know, we're like either one or the other, might not donate enough and might throw away too much. So it's just nice to kind of like create that balance in your life of, you know, balancing your stress levels, balancing what you give away, balancing what you throw away, and even what you compost. It's surprising, but there's certain things that we hang on to that like, they can actually go back out in the yard, you know? I think keeping track of these things in our lives as they're coming in, you'll find like in the minimalist, or less, less community. That's really like the key is stopping it where it starts, you know, asking yourself before you grab something, if that's really what you need. And I also like to think of a life cycle of a possession when I'm bringing it into my life a little bit more now. Again, I am not perfect. I feel like if some of my friends and family saw this video, they would be like roll laughing, like, girl, you love shopping. A whole other video about like addictions and imperfections, but I'll leave it here at that for now. I hope this was helpful to somebody. I will probably be doing another video in the nearish future about what my move experience was like and you know ways that you can kind of utilize some of those similar tools to move in a way that is like less stressful because moving is very stressful too but in the meantime i hope that you find a small area of your home to declutter and remember that that will help to bring you a little bit more peace and pleasing aesthetics in your life thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next time take care